outstanding leading lady in an industry crippling showdown, Tracy Smith takes stock with SAG after President Fran Drescher. It seems there's more to smile about now. The strike is over and red carpets are full again. But in Hollywood, it's not quite business as usual. The big labor dispute is still fresh in everyone's mind. Last year, writers and actors walked off the job after contract talks with film and TV producers broke down in a clash over things like compensation for streaming shows and the use of artificial intelligence. Tiny is one of the most powerful tools we have as union members. Yeah. The studios, facing strong economic headwinds and shrinking movie attendance, made some concessions early on. But for writers and actors, it was not nearly yeah. enough. For the actors, union president Fran Drescher led the charge. We are being systematically squeezed out of our livelihoods. And the studios are saying it's not realistic what you're asking. It's not unrealistic. It's realistic. What the hell are we doing? Moving furniture around on the Titanic. We're all going down unless we rescue ourselves right here and now from people that really are doing bad things to good people. And she said the same things to the studio heads face to face. Some of the new deal was hammered out here at the Screen Actors Guild headquarters in Los Angeles. So this is the room where it happened. It is indeed. Uh, let's see, this is my chair. I sat right here day after day and the four CEOs across from us and their lawyers. This is really where we do it out. In the glass walled conference room, the two sides were physically close, but often miles apart. And at first, neither side was in much of a mood to compromise. I mean, here are the most powerful people in Hollywood saying to me, that's last final. And you said? And I said, I understand what those three words mean, but I'm telling you, if we don't get this and that, it's a deal breaker. This is, of course, a gigantic contract. Drescher says the tone in the room was mostly civil, but she says the negotiations were overall a brutal experience. You know, sometimes I would get so nauseous. One of my vice nauseous? Oh, yes. When I walked out, I would be like, oh my God, I need to sit down. I need something cold to drink. I need to go to the ladies' room. I need everything all at once and right away because it just. It takes a lot out of you. Do you think people underestimated you? Yes, absolutely. Not the people that know me very well. They know me and they didn't expect anything less. The studio bosses? They didn't see me coming. No, not them. Hi, everyone. And after nearly four months, <laughs> there was agreement on a new deal that gave union members a lot of what they were asking for, as sag actress Duncan Crabtree Ireland spelled out. The total package achieves more than $1 billion in new wages and benefit plan funding over the term of the contract. That in essence, the deal gives actors and writers, among other things, a brand new residual for streaming programs and a say in how their AI-generated images will be used. The new contract was, frankly, better than some expected. I mean, George Clooney said, I would have bet my house and lost that you couldn't have gotten this deal. To be sure, the contract negotiations were a trial by fire, but Fran Drescher is no stranger to being tested. <laughs> For instance, the Danny, the 90s show that Drescher helped create and that made her a household name, almost didn't happen. How about a little tennis? <laughs> the main sponsor felt that Drescher's character, Fran Fine, would be more relatable to middle America if she was not Jewish, but Italian. Good in the picture. But Drescher, a Jewish New Yorker from Queens, held her ground. I actually said, Fran Fine has to be Jewish, because I knew that that was the world that I was most comfortable writing for, and the most easiest for me to play, because it was so second nature to me. From here on it, I'm going to give him everything that he was deprived of as a child. Love, warmth, comfort, but first, I'm going to make up for him being a bottle fit. <laughs>
Prime was sponsor of Lamenta. Brand 5 was Jewish, and the nanny was a hit. So you stuck to your guns and yes. went with what was authentic to you. Yes, exactly. Because if I didn't and the show failed, I the feeling of regret that I didn't follow my own instincts uh, would have tormented me for probably still. And she'd been through even worse. In 1985, she was raped during a home invasion and forced herself to memorize her attacker's face so she could identify him to a police sketch artist. We captured him just by me describing to him what was still in my head. My name is Fran Drescher. I'm a cancer survivor. And after she was diagnosed with uterine cancer in 2000, she founded a women's health movement, Cancer Schmancer. she sees it, the bad times helped toughen her up for the challenge of leading a union through a very public and often very nasty strike. Do you think you were made for this moment? Yeah, without question. This was a defining moment and the amalgam of my life experience. Everything, good, bad, the worst of it, the best of it, my ego as a star, all of it, everything went into this one moment of truth. Thank God it paid off. But it might not be over. The Hollywood strike of 23 is said to have emboldened other unions to take action themselves. And when I asked her if her own union might strike again, she wasn't making any guarantees. Do you think there could be more strikes in Hollywood? Um, you know, here's the thing. Let's make a deal. And uh, we won't have to strike. We don't want to strike. We never want to strike. But it took them longer than it should have to realize that we meant business and that there was, uh, you know, a new girl in town. Everybody on the papers around me, and we're honest to me. Our actions speak louder than words. Now they know. Maybe now they'll think differently. It's like, let's not go through that again. Let's just sit down and come to a meeting of minds. You know, there's ways to spend less money, folks. But don't look in my direction. What about your career on camera and producing? What? I'm never going to work again. <laughs> <laughs> there's a blacklist with one name on it. <laughs> but these days, she's basking in the glow of having helped the industry through a tough time and of doing it her way. And I don't care if I'm reelected. You don't? No. I make my case. It may not be popular. And I'll respect that, you know, democracy is messy. I'm not a dictator. But I will stand on my ground. And tonight, Fran Drescher will be standing here on the Oscar red carpet, a small screen star who's found her place among the big screen giants. I'm going. I'm not going to feel like a shrinking violet because I'm not in anything, because I'm in everything. You feel like this year you earned your spot. I do. I do. I won't feel inadequate. <laughs> I feel adequate. <laughs> see you tomorrow. We love you. We'll see you here on The Family Feel. Show until next time. This is Peter Tomorrow, and on behalf of the Focati Rug, saying thanks for pressing your luck. Bye bye. So anyway, we have just 10 seconds to say goodbye. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. So long. Bye bye. Yeah. We got we five seconds. Oh no, we have three, two, one. Bye. bye. bye.